see in my verse Cause yeah, they said it, but I said it first So in a sense, I gave these niggas birth That's why my fans in my show scream and take me to church uh, No suit and tie, but baby, I go to work Don't do it for the money, but that's one of the perks Hey y'all, welcome to h 2 Swo. What's up? Or welcome back uh, Rod's not going to be here tonight with us, just me and Rick. Uh, we got quite a few questions for you guys, I think. Um, what's, Rod, what's Rod doing? He, uh, his wife works tonight. Okay. So he's at home with all the youngins. Rod, what's up, brother? <laughs> but uh, remember, guys, we got the biggest contest we've ever had going on right now. Uh, we got the uh, lifting straps from bodybuilding.com. We got this uh, stainless steel dumbbell necklace. Which is pretty cool. It's actually pretty cool. It's pretty heavy. And then uh, we got this Nutri Shop water bottle. Shallow. From uh, Shallow. And we've got um, the uh, weight belt there. It's a uh, size large. And then we have a extra large H2 Swo uh, toning this for printers lift heavy tee. Uh, it's a sleeveless hoodie. And uh, then uh, to top this all off, we have a one month free membership to the weight pile, which is most hardcore facility in the Truck County area. Exactly. So, uh, guys, this is this is the biggest contest we've ever had. Uh, get in on this. Thanks, like, Nick. The way, pal. Yes, thank you, Nick. By the way, uh, the best thing about this is all you gotta do is interact with us. Uh, you ask us a question. You can do it on the Facebook page. You can do it on hjuicewallgmail.com. Uh, you can do it on the comments below this video. Uh, any kind of interaction with us, uh, if you like the video, share it uh, or subscribe. Uh, remember, we need some subscribers because when we get to 100, uh, me and Rick and Rod are going to have a cookout to celebrate. And so, you hear that? 100 <laughs> subscribers, barbecue here. All right. So, uh, what we're going to do on, is, uh, I guess we're just going to get into questions. Yeah, we'll get all, you, all you got to do is, uh, like we said, interact with us, guys. This is an awesome contest, awesome giveaway. Lots of stuff. Um, Sergeant Strother Ruck, don't forget about that. Uh, I will have a link down below if you guys want to join us and walk with us. Great cause, uh, great reason to get in shape. So, How many, do you have any people for the? There's uh, five of us so far. So five so far to yep. walk 22 miles. Oh, actually there's six. I forgot we have uh, one more member. Six. Walking 22 miles. Um, so. And uh, if you if you, pounds. if you like to walk, uh, but you don't think you can make it to 22 miles, that's okay too. Uh, just uh, paying the entry fee, it's like $25, and showing up for support and walking as far as you can. They have shuttle buses that will pick you up and take you to the end and have water breaks along the way. It, it's for a great cause, guys. So if you if you can't make it through the whole thing, no shame. When uh, is this? It's uh, June, the, it's like towards the end of June. Uh, I forget the date, but there's, I'll put a link down below. 22 miles? How long does it take you to do that? Walk 22 miles, seriously. 22 miles, you're looking at probably 11 hours, I think, probably. Are you serious? Yeah. Because like if you throw in like the water breaks and uh, stuff like that, you're probably you're probably looking at eleven hours walking. But uh, I have two hip replacements. I don't know if my yeah, hips, Rick, I don't know if my Rick hips would do would it work but, uh, after twenty two miles. Yeah, but his <laughs> hips would uh, wear him out. I, I don't know if I can give twenty two miles of my hips away yeah. like that. I mean, I, I did end up carrying Rick. So. Twenty two <laughs> with twenty two pounds of minute change. Yeah. But uh, all right, yeah, it, it'll be fun though, guys. Just come on up there, and uh, it's going to be in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, I think it starts at the horse park, but the link down below will tell you everything you need to know. Uh, they'll send you a welcome packet with a map and all that good stuff. Uh, it's also, uh, if you uh, if you ride, uh, for any of you bike guys out there, they're also uh, having a ride the same day. So it's it's the ruck or ride uh, that, that promotes it and uh, helps get the word out there for veterans. We should talk about water one tonight. Essentia. Okay. 9.5 on the on the uh, pH level scale. So remember, your body is 7.5. So any any water that you drink that's below 7.5 is acidic. Anything above 7.5, and we'll keep saying this throughout all the shows. Mm -hmm. Anything above 7.5 is alkaline. So disease and sickness cannot survive in an alkaline environment. So hey, the most important thing you drink is water. 
So, um, you know, this is, uh, Kroger's got uh, alkaline water that's 9.5 for 89 cents a jug. This is $1.99, but if you want to get it uh, Kroger, they have a Kroger brand, which is 9.5, yeah. um, that's 89 cents. So it's like, wow, 89 cents for a, for, for a bottle. You know what, are you worth 89 cents to drink water and that's life instead of death? Yeah. So your body, I mean, just think about everything. It. Everything works on this, yeah. You know, is in your body, and uh, just to give you guys an idea. The average tap water is between like seven and seven point five. And he's done the test. Yeah. Uh, on I this know. on this water right here. Yeah, I actually did the test on the Laurel County City Water and Coral. Laurel County City Water, this guy, and the Whitley County City Water, and both of them were uh, like seven point two something. Okay. Uh, that's so close. It's still acidic, yeah. but that's higher than what I thought. Yeah, um, it was actually it matched the bottled water. We have like bottled spring water on us that day. I tested it, and it was actually right in line with the bottled spring water. But this stuff that Rick's talking about is definitely, you know, what you want to put in your body. Essentia, nine point five. It's almost, it's almost, it's almost a ten. It goes to ten. So um, if there's one thing that I'm going to invest money in. It's my water, so I saved you. Um, all right, ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, so you guys ready? <laughs> what's up, Cove? Oh. Sorry. Thanks, John. <laughs> all right. Here we go. All right. This is from Tiffany. Tiffany. Uh, uh, here you go, Tiffany. She says, I need to update my playlist. What is your favorite workout music? Uh, that's a cool question. I think everybody always needs to add more to the playlist, so that's a good question. Um, my favorite workout music uh, is uh, Rob Bailey and the Hustle Standard. Uh, if you guys never heard of them, uh, you should check them out. Pretty motivating music. His wife is actually Dana Lynn Bailey, so a lot of you probably do know who she is. She was Miss Olympia. Um, but uh, his music's like real motivating. It's it's kind of hardcore. Um, uh, my favorite workout song of all times would have to be Tupac's "Out on Bell." Um, I can hear that song come on, and I was a little close for home. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's like my that's probably my all time favorite oh, workout that song. Synchronistic. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I like about anything. Uh, I can work out to like R and B. Yeah, I can't. I like country music, but I can't work out the country music. Can you work out no. the country? Uh, I mean, so whatever. I think it's, I think it's personal. It's like whatever you like. I like, I like ACDC and yeah, Boston like, and just jamming good music gets me pumped, fired up. And yeah. I like old like you know, rock and roll and stuff like that. Yeah, so. I literally have like probably six or seven Molly playlists depending on the mood I'm yeah in. like i have like a 90s r b playlist which is weird but i'll listen to that when i'm working out metallica then i get into metallica yeah. and stuff like that god smile <laughs> <laughs> so it's like <laughs> but just uh, yeah if you've never checked out rob bailey and the hustle standard i check that out lincoln park is another good yeah. one i don't think lincoln park's got anything i wouldn't put on a playlist for no. but i think whatever whatever motive whatever whatever music gets you going we get you all gets you fired up you know you know sometimes yeah. that's a personal preference you yeah. know uh, i've got a buddy he works out to uh christian rock music it's like alternative yeah, yeah. but uh um he uh he don't like listening to my music because it's got a lot of cursing and stuff in it most of the time. <laughs> so, so anyways, moving on. <laughs> that was mean it was a bail. All right, <laughs> what's the, what's the uh, number yet? <laughs> this is gonna be an issue, guys. Hey, it took my phone for a minute. There we go. Let's see. All right. All right, here we go. All right, we're ready now. This is from Ryan. Ryan. I have noticed that my left arm seems to be stronger than my right, and it and also it is more defined. What can I do to even out my gains? To to even out my uneven gains. So he said, I'm noticing my left arm seems to be stronger than my right and it is also more defined. What can I what can I do to even out my uneven arms? Uh, my gains. Rick is the man to come to for that. He can tell you. Well, you know, it everybody is not a, what's asymmetrical? The same. Um, every 
Yeah. Everybody has, it, you're not exactly Every, equal. Yeah, everybody's got a dominant muscle of some sort. Like, you know, one arm might be a little bigger than the other, or maybe the muscle might be shaped a little bit more, than, yeah. you know. And unless you're getting into like, you know, IFBB Pro and stuff like that, then then at that level you would have to be symmetrical and have to be that perfectness with your muscles. But yeah. just the right of the mill, <coughs> Average, you know, someone going to the gym, taking care of themselves, you, you know, it, it's you're gonna notice some like like me, my left arm is bigger than my right arm, my left arm is bigger than my right arm, but my right arm is more defined, just exactly kind of what you're you're saying. It's just it's just genetics. So you know, the, I, I do the same thing. My <laughs> my left leg is bigger, and my right leg is more defined. So. It's just, you know, it's, yeah, how it's, body, just, it's how your bodies are. So it's nothing wrong with you or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless, you know, this arm was bigger and this one's like two inches smaller, <laughs> then I would say don't work out on your left arm and work out on your, yeah, your that, right arm. That's one thing you can do right? is, is actually, like, you know, get some dumbbells and, and work the other arm more. Like, do your regular routine, but add some dumbbell stuff with just the one arm that you're wanting to work on. Yeah, um, that's, what I, yeah. that's something you could do. Um, add add some more reps in there to, to get that one up to the strength of your of your other arm. If, if one arm's weaker than the other, yeah, that's something they could throw your bench press on that stuff off too. If, yeah, but I mean, but you know, generally speaking, everybody's naturally going to be yeah nothing. You're one arm you're all right. Yeah, I mean, as as far as being stronger one arm than the other, that's a natural thing. If if anything, um, would you? I mean, if it's like a noticeable thing, like you're like really weak or something, then something could be wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah, but if you're just like, you know, I feel a little weak or whatever, I would just, I would just, I would probably do more reps with that arm. Yeah, just kind of put more emphasis on that one side. And train it more and, than your left arm. Yeah, like Rick said, like there's always going to be some unevenness yes. to the body. Uh, you'll notice when you first hit the gym, there's going to be one muscle group on your body that grows quicker than yes, any other. Yes, that's a good and, point too. And everybody's so. different, you know. I think with mine, it's it's shoulders. Like, you know, my right. my shoulders, like, you know, will be popping, and then like I'm like, man, I wish I could get my other muscles to match up to that, you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's everybody's different, you know. Some people have, have like Rick said, genetics. Some people have great biceps without hitting the gym, you know. That's just how it is. Yeah. But, uh, um, all right. 11, 29, 78. In case you guys want four code or not. <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, Ryan, so to summarize everything, I noticed that my left arm seems stronger. I would, I would do some more reps with your right arm. Yeah, I would too. Okay. There's your, there's your answer. Hope that helps, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the hammer strength machines would be perfect for that. Yeah. If you go to a gym with hammer strength machines, you can actually you know, sit down at the hammer strength machine, and when you stop, you know, your your body workout, you can just go ahead and keep yep. going with one arm. Yeah. You know. Yeah. All right, here we go. Um, Harris, this is from Harrison, 78. I have been in a relationship for two years. She hasn't really done anything wrong, but I feel like we don't offer each other anything. We have opposite interests, and we often do everything apart from each other. Don't really have a reason to break up, but I feel like this relationship is going nowhere. And sometimes it makes me feel like I'm going, I'm going nowhere. I'm going nowhere. My advice, any advice would be appreciated. I've been in a race for two years. She hasn't really done anything wrong, but I feel like we don't offer each other anything. We have opposite interests and we often do everything apart from each other. Don't really have a reason to break up, but I feel like the relationship is going nowhere. So you got comfortable. He's comfortable and he's afraid to change it, mix it up, you know. Um, I mean, two two years and he's saying she really hasn't done anything. I feel like we don't. He's saying I feel like we don't offer anything. And off, we don't offer each other anything. We have opposite interests, and we often do everything apart from each other. Um, that's kind <laughs> of a. It that's pretty like deep. You're, sounds like you're already going down the trail, drifting apart, but. Um, this I mean, is like relationships is something that like I feel strongly about. Like uh, here's here's what happens in a relationship. All right, when you decide to go into a relationship with somebody, um, 
nowadays you see these little memes and stuff that said good relationships are worth fighting for or, right. or people sometimes people fight it out the good ones stay together that, that's not how a relationship really is supposed to work sure i mean when you go into a relationship you're no longer one person you become one with the other person so your that's goals cool. your goals become couple goals and you guys should be pointing the same direction if you're meant to be together. And in order to grow together, you gotta, you know, want the same stuff. And to me, like to settle for somebody yes, yes. that is not in that area for you, because just because you guys, you know, have never done anything wrong to each other or you've been together for so long, it's just that's what's normal. The that you shouldn't settle, man. There is somebody out there who is meant to just freaking interlock with your puzzle piece. Yes. And, and just, I mean, everybody has somebody out there. Amen. And that's just something that, that I feel strongly about. I don't think that you should you should fight for a relationship or struggle it for a relationship. It should just unfold organically and everything should just fit without you having to try. Yeah. I mean, that's... that's you either, from the beginning, when you come into a relationship, you either start to grow together or you start to grow apart. And you guys clearly are growing apart. Yeah. And I'm not telling you to go, yeah, dump, exactly. go dump your girlfriend or nothing. Right, Harrison. That's just my opinion. I mean, Harrison, you're saying we don't offer each other anything. And then you say we have, and then you go on to say we have opposite interests and we do everything apart from each other. You've been together for two years and if it's going that way, you know, we're all adults here. Yeah. It doesn't seem, if, if that's really how it is, I mean, really, if if you have opposite interests, that's like saying, hey, I like to go to the gym, and then you got your mate going, I don't like to go to the gym. That's like you saying, hey, uh, you know, you know, I, I like to, I like to eat, I like, I, I like Italian, and I, 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 I like Italian and Mexican, uh, <laughs> Mexican food, Italian, Mexican food. Um, and your partner going, I hate Italian Mexican food. So yeah. it's like yeah. you're saying that right back to back. So I mean, you're kind of almost answering your own question. Yeah, you, you really are, and you you see it happening. Yeah, and you that's know, why I mean, you. I mean, your explanation tells us what's happening. And in two years, that's enough time to, to like he said, yeah. like Charlie said, get together, and it, you either you either stick or it goes like this. And yeah. it seems like I mean, yeah, you either grew together or you grew apart. And you know, like I can tell you. Um, I've been, me and my wife have been together now for right at 12 years. That's awesome. And like, the gym is, is my thing. And I do that separate from her. But, and it's okay to have separate interests. But when I go home, as far as life goals and, and things that we want, like, like it's all intertwined together. Like we have different interests. She. She quilts and, and does like, you know, photography and stuff like that. I'm not into that stuff. But there's a lot of things you, know, you have in common that you do too. Exactly. You're, you're sounding like you don't do anything. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's okay to, to, to be different. Exactly. But you got to have the same goals in life yeah. to, to, to really mesh with each other. And you said, and, and like Charlie's saying, you don't, we don't have any, we don't offer each other anything. We have opposite interests. So th those are like a core things that could go into oh, yeah. your belief system, how you think you should do things in life, and sure, yeah. it might be different. I mean, there's a that's what he's saying. There's got to be that compromise, and you have yeah. to have. There's certain things that you have. You better 100% have the same interests in. There is somebody family out there. and yeah. God and you know those yeah. things. Those, when we're on the opposite side of the track, there it's yeah. you're done, bro. And there's someone out there. Who is going to bring out the strongest version of you? And yes. that's the person you're meant to be. With. Absolutely. Yeah, it makes it you being with that person, you become a better person. Yeah. So yeah. All right, Harrison. Hope we helped, man. I, I we probably ran yeah. around a circle there, but no. I, I hope we helped. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is from Amber. I watch the show sometimes, and I have heard you all talk about macro, mi micros, and counting those instead of calories could you please go into more detail about macros about macros are and how to keep up with them i watch the show sometimes and i have heard you talk about my macros and 
counting those instead of calories. Could you please go into more detail what macros are and how to keep up with them? That is <coughs> Charlie, um, not me. Macros, uh, it's still a form of calorie counting, but uh, what macros are is like your food is made up of major nutrients. Yes. And out of those, and those are considered macros. And when people talk about macros, they're talking about protein, fat, and carbs. Um, there's also minerals, but that's not what people's talking about when they're talking about, you know, counting macros. That, that's kind of, you know, that goes to the other side. But when you hear people say macros, they're talking about your fat percentages, your protein percentages, and your carb percentages. And uh, if this is something that you're interested in, uh, basically what you do by counting macros is you're going for a body compensation, compensation like your, your body composition is made up a certain way and you're trying to you know, fix that or keep it that way instead of just trying to lose, to lose fat and become skinny fat. Um, and you do this by keeping track of the percentages of your protein levels, uh, your carb levels, and your fat levels. Now, this is, this is you know, like a lot of stuff on the show, this is our opinion. Um, I think that if you're interested in counting macros, first of all, just go to, um, what's it called, My Fitness Pal. Um, is that the Under Armour one? Uh, Under Armour? Yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah. it's, it's like a free app. Yes. It's called My Fitness Pal. And My it, Fitness Pal. And it does all this stuff for you. It will, it shows you a circle chart, right? And uh, this circle chart, it's like you know a pie. It's split into your fat, carbs, and protein. Okay. Now, I'm gonna try to break this down without getting too crazy and make it simple. Um, if you are going for performance, uh, if you're somebody wanting to you know to to run faster, to to hit the long ball, or or to go to CrossFit classes. Uh, if you're that person, you're going to want your carbs to be moderately high. Okay. Now, now this is this is what I'm saying. Your carbs is the only thing you ever really got to mess with for the levels I'm going to talk about. Um, I, I believe there's three different levels that you know you can go for here, and you would have like fat at 20 percent, you know, and then your carbs would be like at least 40 percent and then protein would be the rest. You know, that'd be somebody just out there for performance, trying to perform. Mm -hmm. Now somebody trying to maintain, let's say you feel good with your body, you, you operate well, but you want to, you're just trying to maintain. Uh, what you're going to do is drop your carbs down a little bit and you know, you're just going to make that pie chart for the carbs a little smaller, make the protein automatically get a little bigger. But don't ever adjust the fat. Keep the fat around 20% in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and then Finally, there's the person wanting to cut. And Rick can tell you about this one. Like, what you want to do is take the carbs on your pie chart and just push that thing over even further. And that way your protein at that point is, is probably right at about 50% of your diet. You know, and is it 50% on yeah, it? It's, it's like at least 40, close, really? at least 40, yeah. Wow. Uh, if, if you're counting your macros and, and your, that, that would be if you were cutting down. So you have, uh, you have performance, maintaining and trying to drop the weight down and like I said in the simplest way to describe this is just move the carbohydrates as you and um, I actually wrote an article about this on the website I'll link it down below because I could probably talk for the next hour about it and it's just going to take up time and it may still be confusing <laughs> so but uh, just, basically just just, uh, just adjust your carbs to whatever your goal is Keep the fat around 20%. Yep. And as you adjust lots of the greens. carbs. Yeah, lots of greens. Asparagus, um, green beans, yeah. broccoli. And when we say carbs, the carbs me and Rick are wanting you to eat are, you know, sweet potatoes, oatmeal. Yes. All um, low in medium yeah. on the glycemic index. You yeah. don't want anything in the very high, in the high and then the very high. So. Yeah. But the good thing about counting macros is, let's say your numbers look good for the day, you might be able to occasionally throw a honey bun in there or a brownie, you know. That's why people count macros. It's, it's called flexible dieting. And um, 
I'll just I'll link the link below and you can read more about it if we didn't help you out there. Uh, sorry if I rambled on. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's 64 degrees in or it's 68 degrees in Corbin. Today's oh, high was 82, That's and good. the low is 64. <laughs> Partly cloudy with a chance of rain, 40 percent. That's good. Okay, nice question. question. <laughs> Yeah. That's good time. You just never know where we're gonna go on here. All right. Hope, hope that helped, Amber. Uh, Michelle, I am trying to cut down for the summer. I know it's a little late to work on a six pack, but I just want to shed a little fat before I head to the beach. What are some tips you have worked? What are some tips that have worked for you guys when trying to cut fast? Um, really? That's, All right, this that's is gonna be, yeah, alley. This is gonna be my up alley, my alley. All right, so you're right. Summer's right around the corner, and you don't have time to go on a three month program. So you wanna you wanna drop some weight quick. First, you're gonna have to. I don't know how quick or whatever, because you don't say. So we'll just say, let's just say a month. Okay, so so Monday's coming up. This Monday is coming up. So from this coming up Monday for a month, this is what you should do, okay, to cut weight fat. And if you listen, it'll work, okay? First, you need to go to the store and you need to get a bottle of Bragg's apple cider vinegar. It has the mother in the bottom. It's Bragg's brand apple cider vinegar. Go get you that and go get you, go, you can get it at uh, Kroger and then at Kroger too, or I don't think you can get it at Walmart, the Bragg's brand. It's Bragg's brand apple cider vinegar, and it has the stuff on the bottom. It looks like dirt. So when you shake it up, it's apple cider vinegar, but that brown stuff on the bo bottom is called mother, and that's where all the medicinal qualities are, is in the mother. So you shake it up, and, it, and it's like really dark apple cider vinegar. That's Bragg's brand. First thing. Second thing is to go to the store and get some hydroxy citric acid, which is, that's the, that's what's in the, uh, Garcinia gambo gamboio is hydroxy citric acid. Yeah, so the, the leaf is the plant, plant yeah. is the Gar Garcinia gambo whatever. You'll G you'll see it. Hydroxy citric acid. Okay, so you're going to take in the morning. Apple cider vinegar helps you lose weight. It controls. It also controls the way your blood. It regulates your blood sugar. So it's when you're taking apple cider vinegar, a tablespoon in the morning and after afternoon and in the early evening, a tablespoon of Bragg's apple cider vinegar. I'm, you can put mix it with water and dilute it, um, or you can get some uh, grapefruit juice and put and put it put just a little bit of grapefruit juice in, and then you're tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and you can't taste it all. So Does that be the unsweetened or no it can just be the normal okay. normal um, grapefruit juice. So tablespoon in the morning, tablespoon at noon, tablespoon in the in the uh, early afternoon. So Bragg's apple cider vinegar. It has to be Bragg's. Take that with the hydroxy citric acid. Those two work together. They burn fat like crazy, like incinerate fat. It's old school but it works, okay? Bragg's apple cider vinegar and hydroxy citric acid, take them together. Second would be to adjust how many carbs you're eating, okay, in your diet because it's 70% nutrition, 30% training, okay, and, but the, it's, the mo most of it is dieting. It's watching what you're eating. And you're doing that and you're, you're leveraging yourself, you're creating momentum because you're taking the Bragg's apple cider vinegar and the hydroxy citric acid, okay, along with adjusting your diet, so you're going to start losing weight. So keep your carbs low. I would say 100 grams a day, okay, of good carbs: oatmeal, brown rice, sweet potato, red potatoes, okay, and your and pro protein, and then greens, okay. Everything here is the easiest way is. All vegetables are okay except for peas, corn, and carrots. All the other ones are game. You, you, you're you're good to go on all the other ones. So asparagus is, is asparagus right is amazing. Yeah. Lots of iron in there. It is awesome. So your Bragg's apple cider vinegar morning afternoon morning morning noon and early afternoon, along with just your carbs, no more than a hundred carbs a day. Okay. 
protein. You're going to eat six small meals a day. All right. You probably heard this. I'm just regurgitating what you probably already know, but you need to hear it. Okay. Six small meals. You're going to eat every three hours. So six o'clock in the morning, nine, 12, three, six, nine. There's six meals. The protein is going to be the size of a deck of cards, cards, whatever you eat. So beef, chicken, turkey, eggs, scrambled eggs, whatever, would be the size of a deck of cards. Okay, that's going to be your protein. And then your carbs, your first three meals, you're going to eat carbs about the size of your fist. Okay, so that's a good, that's a, a good one, about the size of your fist. So a sweet potato that big, three little red potatoes that big, um, brown, rice. brown rice that big, oatmeal made, you know, the size of your fist. That's how, that's a good, that's a good, good uh, yeah. way to judge it. Do that, drink water, at least a gallon of water a day, okay, at least, because everything happens with water. Your, everything in your body functions from water. Yep. It, the, if you're hydrated, your body is working in the optimum way it was created to work. You don't have water, well guess what, your body, this is the gasoline for your body. Yep. So, we, ha I mean, to everything water, okay? Everything water, it starts with water. I mean, water goes through your DNA, it goes through your double helix, it keeps it puffed up and nice so everything's working right. Imagine if it's not getting water, what your, what your DNA helix looks like. It starts shrinking up like a raisin. Okay. Things don't fire up, it starts dying. Without proper hydration, you know, also toxins build up. Yes. So water is great, crazy. When people come to me and they're like, Rick, can you help me lose weight? And I'm like, hey, can, can you drink a gallon of water a day? I don't know if I can do that. Next, I didn't want to hear it. <laughs> you gotta drink water, okay? You gotta love yourself enough and you wanna help yourself enough and you want to do this. What is it, what's your name? Um, your butter and almost, sorry. <laughs> uh, Michelle? No. Is it? Yeah, Michelle. Yeah. Michelle. Michelle, if you want to do this, you got to want to do it. A gallon of water a day, six small meals, okay? The first three, you're going to have your carbohydrates, red potatoes, sweet potatoes, oatmeal, uh, uh, what else? Brown rice, okay? Red potatoes. So yeah. those are your carbs. Six small, you can have carbs your first three meals. The last three meals, you can't have carbs. You do that consistently for a month. And you're gonna lose weight, I promise. A lot of people just pack a jug around, like a just a gallon jug of water. But if you like to spend money a little bit, uh, you can get one of these Arctic. This is a one gallon container, and this ice has been here for two days. So I mean, that's, that's right. Yeah, um, I don't know exactly how much they are. Rob bought it for me, but I think they're around like forty bucks or something uh, on the website. But it's a one gallon container, and it keeps your water cold all day long. You can pack it around with you. You can sling it about anywhere because it's metal. That's cool. But, yeah. Um, or you can win the contest and get uh, one of these NutriShop water bottles. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Which is, what's that, is that, a half a gallon? Uh, I think no, that is the yeah, half a gallon. So yeah, half a gallon. So. But, uh, All right. So, that's Michelle, good. that's what I, six small meals a day, hydroxy citric acid, and, and Bragg's apple cider vinegar. A month started. Okay, thanks for, I uh, hope that answers your question. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, you could throw some fasted cardio in there too. Uh, yeah. Like, what I mean by fasting, I'm not telling you to fast. Uh, like Rick said, you need to keep uh, eating small meals every three hours. But what I mean by fasted cardio is, I mean, when you wake up in the morning, go do cardio before you eat. Um, that way, you know, you're gonna be targeting the fat. Um, if you want to maintain muscle, you can drink BCAAs uh, during or before the run or the walk or the, you know, it even adding an hour walk in the morning was is not that strenuous on you, but it'll do wonders for you mm -hmm. if you do it fast in the morning, you know. For sure. Yep. Yep. All right, Michelle. Okay, go do it. Uh, this is from last question. Last question it is from Mandy. Mandy. I get about 20, 30 minutes every day to hit the gym. Do you think this is do you think this is helping or should I find more time? I get about 20 to 30 minutes every day. Oh, oh no. 
I get about 20 to 30 minutes every few days to hit the gym. Do you think this is help me, helping or should I find more time? So 20 or 30 minutes every few days, a few means three to me, about yeah. three. So every three days you're training for 20 to 30 minutes. You know, it's something. Yeah. It's not like you're not doing nothing. So the 20 to 30 minutes is is good for you, yes, but yes. is it is it is it enough time to help you get to like some big fitness goals? Is it enough time to transform your body? Maybe like you want or whatever. I don't know what your goals are, but yeah. 20 to 30 minutes every third day is okay. not enough. It's, yeah, it's, it's enough to go, keep the blood flowing, yeah. keep you active, keep the joints going. Um, but as far as the other. Yeah, it's, it's probably heart healthy if you're if you're hitting the treadmill for that 20 or 30 minutes every few days but like Rick said if you're like trying to reach some big goals uh, yeah. I don't see it happen but hey it's better than nothing yeah, if, that, yeah. if that's all you can do go there yeah, every enough. third day and you need to that 20 30 minutes you need to be rocking cardio you know going for circuit training from this machine this machine this machine to get it all in a half an hour and then get out of there. Yeah, could, would that be beneficial every three oh, days yeah. to get in and just kill it like that? Yeah, but to go in and th do some weight, walk, and yeah. think about things, go do whatever, 20 yeah, to 30 minutes. If you're nothing. doing a normal workout, then in 20 to 30 minutes, you haven't done anything. But like Rick said, if you're hitting it hardcore in there, yeah. you know, you probably could get something. But, you know, if maybe you could wake up a little earlier or, you know, uh, if you got a boyfriend or husband maybe they could take something off your plate to give you like you know 30 more minutes on those days um, but I mean what what is an hour like four percent of your day right you know I mean you're 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 worth that absolutely I mean, you really are and if you want you know you have some goals and a fitness goals and, and all yeah. it requires is for you to get up a little early yeah then it comes to it comes to being dedicated yeah. it comes to discipline and you have to discipline yourself. You know what? To make this work, I got to get up an hour earlier each yeah. day. I know it might suck, but if that's what you got to do to get to here, then maybe you know getting up an hour early would be would be the way to yeah. go. If you could ask, if you could ask me what one trait is that champions have that other people don't, I would say that trait is discipline. That's the number one thing. Yeah, because uh, I mean it's. It's the guys that, you know, are out there when they don't have to be out there. You know, Discipline. You, you got the guys, you know, you know, coaches like, give me, you know, 50 free throws and then run, you know, uh, 100 laps and then everybody go home, you know. And then you've got that one kid out there who after running, you know, the 100 laps goes back over to the free throw line and starts, you know, shooting until they throw him out of the gym, you know. That's... That's what separates, you know. Uh, doing what's required is never yes. going to separate you from exactly. the pack. Anything above required, that's where it grows. A little is. more than just normal, yeah. just like he said, just like Charlie said. You know, you can do, you can be a part of the flock. Yeah. You can be led and fed, or you know what, you can stand up, you can be you, and you can go against the grain, and you can get you, whatever whatever it is I mean we think it don't get us wrong I think it's great that you you are hitting it 20 yeah, 30 yeah. minutes every few days and you might be genetically blessed um, I know girls and guys that never hit the gym they look amazing you know uh, you may be blessed in that way but it doesn't mean your body's completely healthy you know and uh, I think you're worth you know at least 45 minutes to an hour yeah for sure you can know half an hour in there and that's that's awesome. Which might require you to do something on your other end, you know, like getting up early, whatever. Like Charlie said, but if you want it bad enough, okay, you'll do it. Yeah. Hope we helped. Yeah. Hope you helped. I don't just start That's all the questions. That's Charlie coming yeah, in and saying the day. He's like, oh, <laughs> here goes Rick. <laughs> we just started going off there. Uh, but uh, remember this contest, guys. Uh, this contest is actually going to be going on for like another two weeks because we're not going to have a show. Uh, Memorial Day weekend uh, because I'm going to Oklahoma uh, to meet my sisters and my brother for the first time. That's awesome. Really cool. But uh, 
Uh, so this contest is going to be going on for a couple more weeks. So get in on this, guys. And uh, like we said, we got the got the free one month membership to the Wake Pile, courtesy of Nick. Thanks, Nick. Um, we've got you know this NutriShop water bottle. We've got these Thanks, body shallow. bottom wraps. Uh, got the weight belt. Got the got the H two Swole T shirt, so you can be repping that merch with us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Got a got this dumbbell yeah. necklace, so dumbbell people, necklace. people know you're serious. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's you're a all over that thing. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for the four people that actually watch us every week, yeah. uh, I'm sorry we're not going to be uh, this this coming weekend. We won't have a show. Uh, I may upload something. I might have some old footage or something. Me and Rick goofing off. I don't know. But, uh, I might upload something just to hold you guys over since you love us so much. Yeah. But uh, and I, we and we thank the viewers. Yes, we do. With four to four hundred, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We're, it's all we're yeah. grateful for all of them. Hey, we enjoy this. Yeah, we do. We don't do this out of anything but the fact that we love doing it. Uh, we love to help. Love to, you know, I don't know if you can it. tell, but nothing's scripted. Right. <laughs> we is, just uh, we just give you our honest opinion and answers <laughs> from <laughs> New York. <laughs> so uh, we hope we helped you guys this week. Yeah. Uh, hope to see you again. Remember, uh, keep your head up. Positive, positive, positive. Oh yeah, Rick's got to come up with something. Yeah, positive. you know what? I think I that. think this is you know some things I've learned lately is that uh, you know sometimes our biggest breakthroughs are right when we get to the point where you know we're like you know what's going on? It's just you know I got enough. <laughs> I mean, come on. And right when you think that, that you know. It's right then you have a breakthrough and things break and things start start panning out and things start working out and I'm you know I, what we always say just never never quit just keep yeah. going stay as positive but I know we're human sometimes things happen and you know it can't be all positive Joe all the time but you know what you can consciously try to be as positive as you can through any situation that you go go through you make the best of it at that point as you're going through it to, to get to the other side to just kind of get through it so you know you're going through stuff just just try to try to eh, there's a season for everything this too shall pass okay time heals time it, it, life keeps churning just as it does it and you were in this journey and you're learning the things you are so it's a process just uh, try to be Try to keep your head up and uh, just never quit and keep it off. Because it will work out. Definitely. One thing you'll learn, guys and gals, uh, in life, like sometimes your goals and your journey uh, is not what God intended, you know, or the universe or Allah, you know, whatever direction you guys are believing in, spiritually wise, you know, um, it's not what they intended. Okay, that doesn't mean that you know things ain't gonna work out for something else. That means yes. you're meant for something yes. bigger. Yes, yes. You know, and a lot of times you'll find out when things didn't go down that trail that you you were so you know. I mean, that's all you wanted. You were gonna get that. You were gonna get that. And then all of a sudden, you know, God just intervenes. He's like, nope, that's not the plan. And you know, sometimes it's the next day. Sometimes you know, it's it's months from then. But then all of a sudden, one day things turn around yes. and you realize, you know, if I would have done that or got that, I would never be here. Yes. And you'll find out that a lot of times here is so much better than you thought it was going to be. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, you know, pull, pull up Facebook. I posted a uh, uh, quote to Facebook. Hey, look. Uh, go, go, go to my page and follow me. I, I look, try, you know, yeah, look day, Rick up, up on whatever. Facebook. Um, Rick Fitzgerald. I don't know if I'm friends with you. Are you serious? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here you yeah. go. I, I did this post today and it kind of talks, it's kind of what we were talking about. It says, Your journey has molded you for your greater good. And it was exactly what it needed to be. Don't think you've lost time. There is no, no, there is no shortcut cutting to life. It took each and every situation you have encountered to bring you to the now. And now is right on time. There you go, guys. 
That's it. That's, <laughs> that's it right there. So just, mm -hmm. you know, it's all a process. Trust it and um, yeah. you'll be all right. And remember, right where you're supposed to be. Remember, you can never live in the future, but you can live in the now. Exactly. The future is always going to be the future. You know, now is really all we have. Yeah. So enjoy every moment that we get. You know? Yeah, I agree. And, uh, we're getting a little hippie-ish now. So all right, all right. We'll, we'll take that. Uh, <laughs> we're turning into tree huggers. Tonight. You guys have a great, uh, great couple weeks, yeah. and uh, just get out there and move. I work hard. We'll see you next week.